It's the Real News. I'm Ben Norton. The United Nations Palestine Refugee Agency, UNRWA, is facing one of the greatest challenges to its existence in decades. The UN Refugee Relief Works Agency, known as UNRWA, which helps the world's 5.4 million Palestinian, Palestinian refugees survive, could run out of money as soon as July, primarily because the administration of U.S. President Donald Trump has drastically cut funding for the agency. UNRWA is missing $250 million and will soon no longer have enough funding for food distribution and psychosocial support in Gaza, as well as for work programs in the Israeli-occupied West Bank and other support systems for Palestinian refugees in other countries. In February, President Trump cut the U.S. contribution to UNRWA's budget. The U.S. was the largest funder of UNRWA, an organization which is providing essential aid to millions of Palestinian refugees living across the Middle East, in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, the West Bank, and most importantly, given the dire humanitarian situation, Gaza. UNRWA schools are scheduled to start the school year in August, but as things stand currently, UNRWA is simply not able to open on time. UNRWA spokesman Christopher Guns told Al Jazeera that the budget shortfall, what it means for UNRWA. UNRWA is undergoing an unprecedented financial crisis, a deficit of $256 million, and make no mistake, that means that our emergency services for some of the most desperate people in the Middle East are very much in question, and it's certainly a big question mark over our, over our schools. Um, we don't have enough money in the bank, as things currently stand, to open schools for half a million kids across the Middle East. To discuss this today, I'm joined by Phyllis Bennis. Phyllis is a fellow at and a director of the New Internationalism Project at the Institute for Policy Studies in Washington, D.C. She's the author of many books, including Understanding the Palestinian-Israeli Conflict. Thanks for joining us, Phyllis. Good to be with you. So can you respond to this news that in just as soon as a few weeks, UNRWA could run out of funding to provide these critical support services for Palestinian refugees? This is an absolute disaster across the Middle East. What we're looking at is a huge cut. The U.S. cut 80 percent of what, it's, what it paid to UNRWA last year uh, and went down from 360 million to simply 60 million this year. It cut 300 million dollars out of the budget. And as we just heard from Chris Gunnis and, and the, the article that you were referring to earlier, that means there's absolute immediate drastic impact on this agency that operates very much on a hand-to-mouth basis because it simply has never had enough money to, to be able to create endowments and permanent funding and that sort of thing. It's dependent on the voluntary funding uh, from countries that are member states of the United Nations. So what it means is that uh, Palestinian refugees in Syria, for instance, who, are, who have now been displaced for some of them a sixth or even seventh time in their lives. They, they were displaced from their homes in Palestine, perhaps their grandparents in 1947, maybe moved to Jordan, were expelled from there, ended up in Lebanon, went to, to, to Syria, are being, that, that are being kicked out again, that are losing their homes again in the context of the Syrian war. They are desperate and they may now lose food access. The same in Gaza, the access to food assistance and to the kind of psychosocial assistance for, for children coming after the, the series of Israeli wars against Gaza that have left children devastated and with serious mental and emotional illnesses that need to be treated, all of that could be lost. There simply is not enough funding uh, available. In the West Bank, there are, are uh, work for cash programs that are now unable to provide cash to people that they depend on to be able to pay rent, to be able to buy food for their families. We're talking, for example, Ben, in, in Gaza, 80% of the population there are refugees. And of those, 80% are fully dependent on UNRWA for food aid and for basic medical care and education. This is a scenario where the Palestinian economy, especially in Gaza, but in the West Bank as well, has largely been shredded over the years uh, because of Israeli control, the nature of the Israeli colonization of Palestinian territory means that the possibility for a, a viable functional economy is virtually gone. And one of the major employers throughout the territories in both the West Bank and Gaza and occupied East Jerusalem, 
is UNRWA. UNRWA, unlike most other UN aid agencies, UNRWA's staff is more than 99% Palestinians. So it's the major job supplier in an area where unemployment is officially between 30 and 40% in parts of it. And if you talk about young people, it's maybe 50%. And unofficially, it can go up to 80% at various times in Gaza. So in that context, to face the loss of all of these jobs is absolutely devastating for the Palestinian population. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about the history of UNRWA. It's an organization that was set up specifically for Palestinian refugees uh, after what's known as the Nekba in, in 1947 and 48, where nearly one million Palestinian refugees were expelled from the land of historic Palestine. Um, and today there are more than five million Palestinian refugees throughout the world. Um, and other refugees around the world are addressed by the UNHCR, not by UNRWA. Why is that? UNRWA was the first aid agency established by the United Nations. You know, we sometimes forget that the United Nations created the state of Israel, was supposed to create a state of Palestine based on the very unfair borders drawn in 1947 in what was known as the Partition Agreement. Uh, but that, of course, Palestinian state never came to fruition. It never happened. Israel did. Israel is the responsibility for its creation of, it's a project of the United Nations. So the UN early on, and this was of course just in the first few years of the UN's existence, there was no history of UN aid agencies, that all came later. Based on the experience of UNRWA, it was the first aid agency to be created and it was specifically designed to take care of the refugees who had been displaced. As you say, it was more than 750,000 people that were expelled from their land, from their homes in the war of 1947-48 were scattered throughout the region. Some ended up in the West Bank, which was then under Jordanian control, or the Gaza Strip, then under Egyptian control. Many ended up outside of historic Palestine altogether in refugee camps that were established in Lebanon, in Syria, in Jordan. And they have been there ever since because they have been denied the right to go home. All of this is a function of the refusal of Israel to acknowledge and implement the internationally recognized law that says that Palestinians have the right to return to their homes. That's part of the, the law of international law after every war, that everyone has the right to leave their home, to seek refuge, and to return to their home. But it seems in terms of implementation, it's everyone except Palestinians. So UNRWA was established in 1949. It was first made up of tents that were established in these areas where Palestinians had, in, in their desperation, had concentrated tent cities in, in Gaza, tent cities in the West Bank, tent cities in all of these other areas, that over the years, those tent cities were replaced by flimsy huts made out of uh, bricks and, and, and uh, uh, cloth in some places. Now, most of them look like very poor towns. They don't look like refugee camps, except for the fact that they don't have sufficient water, they don't have sufficient electricity, in, in one of the big refugee camps in Gaza, there's something known as the sewage pool. It's a giant sort of shiny pool of raw sewage that has never been able to be uh, handled properly because even when the sewage treatment plant works, which is not very often, it's not powerful enough to deal with this long-standing existing amount of sewage. So the effect on the, the health of particularly children and elderly and people with compromised immune systems. Uh, it's, it's a very dangerous reality. And UNRWA is kind of all that stands between Palestinians facing that catastrophic day-to-day -day life and an even worse situation where they would be without adequate food, without even the basics of education, which has provided for a, one of the best educated populations in the Middle East because of UNRWA schools. Uh, but that's all now at risk because of the cuts by the United States. Uh, multiple Israeli officials, especially Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, have actually called for UNRWA to be shut down entirely. But what's interesting is that's their public rhetoric. Behind the scenes, uh, Israel has actually been trying very hard to keep UNRWA operating smoothly. And that's simply because under international humanitarian law, Israeli officials know that the occupying force has actually a responsibility that's mandated to care for the social needs of the population under occupation. Therefore, there's a problem. Well, you can respond. 
Sure. It, I mean, exactly what you said. This is a huge challenge for Israel. Their political position, their public position, as you say, is UNRWA is a propaganda outfit. It's only because of UNRWA that there are any Palestinian refugees left anyway. It's not clear where they think they would have gone if they were not for UNRWA. But that's their political position. They claim it's politicized, etc. The reality is that, as you say, Israel would be obligated to provide for the basic needs of the Palestinian population living under occupation under the terms of the Geneva Convention. Now, Israel, of course, also acknowledges that in their view, there is no applicability of the Geneva Conventions because they don't acknowledge that the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem are occupied territory. Their language is these are disputed territories because an occupation only applies, according to Israel, if it was an independent sovereign state that was occupied in the course of a war between sovereign states. Of course, that's not what international law says, and no one else in the world agrees with the Israeli position. But because Israel has the, the protection of the United States, whether they would even be held accountable for the, the humanitarian consequences of simply refusing to provide adequate food, medicine, education, etc., as required by international law, whether there would be any consequence for that failure is an open guess. And I think Israelis are not wrong to think that they could probably get away with it. There could probably be widespread death from malnutrition, treatable diseases without medicine available, et cetera, in the Palestinian territory under direct Israeli responsibility without UNRWA, and Israel would not be held responsible. That's the, the, the bargain that I think they, at least some Israeli officials, are probably looking at. Yeah, yeah, this is the central contradiction, and this has been a debate for some years within Palestinian circles. It's, does UNRWA effectively subsidize the Israeli occupation by providing these services that are technically required under international law? However, as you mentioned, if UNRWA were to cease to exist, to run out of funding to end its services, the likelihood of Israel filling that void and providing those services is low. So just in, briefly here to conclude, um, do you think that UNRWA is in some ways subsidizing Israel's occupation? And while it looks like things could get worse, what is the potential way out of this? There is certainly an argument that can be made that the existence of UNRWA is helping to allow the occupation to continue in its current form. It's not making the occupation possible. It's not something that without which the occupation would not continue and conditions would get worse for Palestinians. So I think the overwhelming majority of Palestinians do not want the uh, do not want UNRWA uh, to to collapse to be ended. Uh, this is not the same as the situation of the Oslo Agreement created Palestinian Authority, which many Palestinians believe is providing the security uh, collaboration with the Israeli occupation. And in that sense, they would prefer that the Oslo structures be ended. UNRWA is a very different thing. It employs Palestinians. It's the major employer in the region. Uh, and it has provided not only basic food and medicine, but also education for Palestinian children, which would not be otherwise available. There is simply no funding. There's no, uh, there's no tax base. There's no way to fund an educational system in the occupied territories under complete military occupation, if not for this kind of international support. Well, we'll have to end our conversation there. I was joined by Phyllis Bennis, who is an author of several books, including most recently, Understanding the Palestinian-Israeli Conflict. She's also a fellow at and director of the New Internationalism Project at the Institute for Policy Studies in Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us, Phyllis. Thank you, Ben. It's been a pleasure. For The Real News, I'm Ben Norton.